Okay, so full disclosure guys, I filmed a vlog and I'm sitting here editing it and I don't like it. I worked on the boat, on the computer, all day and only started filming at sundown. So on the fly I've decided that instead of putting that vlog out, I'm going to tell you nine apps, well nine resources that have really helped me in my first season cruising full time to get this far through the Caribbean. If you watch this channel for the entertainment travel vlog kind of stuff, this might not be of interest to you, but if you are planning on cruising full time, if you are planning on buying a sailboat, if you are sailing, this might help you. But just really quickly, I'll take 20 seconds to show you what the vlog would have been today. Oh boy. Look at that. Oh, cool. Oh, me, I cannot believe I did that. I left the gas tank in the cockpit. Look at that. This is St. Bart's summed up in one photo. That's hilarious. Okay, I have a list and I'm gonna run through them super quickly. The first one is Savvy Navi and I have partnered with Savvy Navi in the past but they're not paying me to say this. Savvy Navi is a really good app for a lot of things. First and foremost, it's a navigation app. So basically like the Google Maps of boating, you can actually take this on every little turn. It shows you your depth, it shows you your speed. You can plot routes with it, but you can also overlay a bunch of weather stuff. So this is a weather prediction app as well. And my favorite is the internet driven AIS. I don't actually have the equipment on the boat to have AIS and identify other vessels. But with my Starlink internet connection, I can do just that. Here's one, it's moving. They're doing 7.9, they're doing nine knots, they're eight miles away. So I use this a lot on night passages in conjunction with my radar and it is super helpful. Savvy Navi also has really good reviews. So if I zoom into Jolly Harbor where I wanna go next, it shows the exposure, you know, where, in what conditions it's gonna be a protected anchorage. And then there are reviews so people might say how comfortable the anchorage is. They might say where the dinghy dock is, give directions and tips for customs and immigration, or they might tell you a really good bar to go to ashore. This is a great app, and this is probably the first one I use when I'm getting ready to go for a passage. Navionics is another really good app. This is actually the software that I use inside my BNG chart plotter, which is integral to the boat. The way that Navionics works is you have to pay for map packs. So I have purchased the map pack that is South Florida, all the way down to Brazil, it includes South America. It was a few hundred dollars and that'll last me years of sailing. Navionics also has reviews, but I will say that Savvy Navi's reviews seem to be more current. It's, it's a newer app and a lot of the reviews on Navionics are from like 2019 and are out of date. But I use this app all the time. I also really like if you zoom in, if I zoom in to Jolly Harbor, you can see everything that's important to sailors. So you can see your customs and immigration, you can see your dinghy dock, you can see bars and restaurants that are waterfront, um, you know, fuel, and you'll even have fuel prices on here. If we're talking apps strictly for weather, I use Predict Wind probably the most often. Predict Wind is my the first place I go for weather. I have the free version of the app. There is a paid version that can integrate into my BNG chart plotter outside and I can use actually to do the weather routing for me. But you see here, I can cycle through and see predicted wind at different times. I can see exactly that place. Wave map, I can see wave, I can see wave period, which is the interval, the time between each wave, which is just as important as the wave height and direction. Um, and I have mine set in meters, but you see there's some bad days. I also love to zoom out and see the overview of what's happening. I get rid of that. You can see that on the 30th, 31st, you can have a nice system come in. So I would like to be a little, far, little farther south. Uh, they also have rain maps and a whole bunch of other maps. But mostly I use the wind and the waves. Again, that's the free version. It's gotten me this far through the Caribbean. I, you know, just saying. Another really good weather protection app that was recommended to me from a sailor that I met in Turks and Caicos is Windy. This is a free version of this app, but there are so many overlays that no matter how much you know about weather, 
they got it here for you. There's there's so much stuff about why they're on here that I will never, ever understand. Um, but it's a really good app. You can see here, I can go to the, the wave map there and zoom in between here and Antigua. And I can cycle through this week. And you can see on there the wave height and the period changing. And yes, I don't know if you can notice on the camera, but it is super rocky in this anchorage. <laughs> the next thing is Anchor Alarm Pro. This is the free version of this app. Captain Glenn on Parsifal told me to download this app while I was working on Parsifal. Everyone should have an Anchor Alarm. Um, mooring balls fail, you know, your anchor drags. Uh, if you are asleep, this will set a circle around your swing. You can manually draw it or it will automatically set a circle. And if your boat drifts outside of that, it will play an audible alarm to hopefully wake you up. Again, this is totally free and can save your butt major. So I set an anchor alarm every night. Also for weather, this is not an app I know, Mike's weather page. Even if you're not on a sailboat, this is a good one to have if you're uh, located in the Caribbean, Central America, or US. Uh, he mostly um, profiled tropical storms and you know movement on weather coming into the Caribbean. And we just had Hurricane Barrel come through. This is the guy I was getting all my updates from. Um, he has a, does a really good job of explaining things. The stories are super helpful. Um, I would highly recommend you to follow this guy. He, it has been a great resource for me. Moving on, not every country needs to be notified ahead of time before you depart for that country. Like St. Martin, St. Bart's, I showed up and I filled out my paperwork on a computer online in the Capitaneries ashore. But some places need you to notify them. So this website is Sail Clear, and I will show you a list of countries that require you to fill out your Sail Clear ahead of, ahead of time before you arrive. You should do it as soon as you feel comfortable about that arrival date, but I've done it morning of and it's been fine. So BVI's, Turks and Caicos, Dominican Republic, Basically, you just say, when, you're, when you think that you're gonna arrive, when you think that you're gonna leave that country, your previous port, your intended port, uh, your reason for um, cruising, is it commercial, is it pleasure? Then you enter all your boat details, your registration details, you enter your crew list, and then you can just add and subtract crew from that crew list. And when you arrive ashore at that immigration office, they'll print this out and they'll have all your information uh, right there on their system. So it makes it easier for them and it makes it easier for you to it's usually a quick process with SailClear. I have not used the CBP Rome app. Um, I should have when I was clearing into St. Thomas, but I didn't know. Uh, but it's what the US Coast Guard uh, uses instead of SailClear. It basically does the same thing. You can do an arrival notification, a departure notification. As far as Charlie goes and trying to get information and what to do with Charlie and you know his pet import fees, what vaccines are required at every different place. The resource that I find myself coming back to continually is a blog post by Tula's Endless Summer. I think that they have just done a great job. You see here, if I scroll down, they have a bunch of different countries, pretty much every country in the Caribbean. They have the requirements that that country needs. All of them are different. And then they will usually have you know, how much it costs, their experience, what fees are included, if there's any banned breeds, usually pit bulls, unfortunately. And in many cases, they will give you the email to uh, veterinarians that they recommend or that they had a good experience with. They will give you the link to websites um, to get your import permits. It has been super helpful for me. Um, and on top of that, I will usually say that I always check the boxes that I have a dog with me but it has been very rare that anyone has asked questions. It's only happened in two countries that I've gone to that anyone actually wanted to see Charlie's paperwork. So I've been taking that into consideration lately, but it's, you know, this is a great resource. And yeah, that's it. Sorry that we didn't do the vlog today, but I hope that this video is helpful for somebody. And the next vlog is filmed that I'm about to edit it right now and it'll be out shortly. Sorry. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. he's in the cage. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're welcome to my blooper reel. <laughs> I appreciate that.